Hi, and welcome back. So an interesting article I read in the conversation talked about unregulated health supplements, longevity supplements, and the damage and the harm they can do, side effects, etc., if we unwittingly overdose or we use them in an incorrect way. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's have a look at the harm, the damage that unregulated supplements can do if we use them incorrectly. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Geraldine Moses and published in The Conversation, where she covers, as well as the side effects, the actual harm that dietary supplements can cause. Supplements are not usually prescribed by medical professionals, so all we as consumers have to go on are the dosages and the protocols set out by the manufacturers, ignoring or misinterpreting. These guidelines could actually do us harm. And there are links in the description below to the study and the articles I used to put this presentation together. One reason that dietary supplements are so popular is the perception that they are natural and therefore harmless. But like all compounds that we ingest, there are potential dangers from taking vitamins and minerals in supplement form. The problem is that unlike conventional medicines, dietary supplements aren't required to provide warnings to consumers of their potential risks. The statement that most companies make in the main is that these statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure or prevent any disease. Dietary supplements are natural health products such as vitamins, minerals, amino acids, enzymes, plant extracts and algae used to augment people's diets rather than treat diseases. The most popular dietary supplements among adults are multivitamins, vitamin D3, vitamin C, calcium, vitamin B or vitamin B complex, omega-3 fatty acids, magnesium, iron and vitamin E. More on multivitamins later and how they're not a catch-all but an expensive way to supplement with elements you may not even need. So potentially you could be overdosing. So how big is the global supplement market? The global dietary supplement market was 61.2 billion US dollars in 2020. This is projected to grow from 71.81 billion in 2021 to 128.64 billion in 2028. Around 77% of US adults take dietary supplements, and I'm sure this number will be similar in most first and second world countries too. With respect to the type of supplements being taken, a 2019 survey found that vitamins and minerals continue to be the most commonly consumed supplement category, with 76% of Americans having taken these products in the last 12 months. People often say they've never heard of dietary supplements causing actual harm or even death. This isn't surprising given that marketing is largely based on benefits with little if any mention of potential harm or side effects. Add to this the consumer information leaflets that are provided with prescribed medications are never provided for supplements and very few products actually carry warnings on their packaging of potential serious side effects. Nonetheless, there are recognized side effects from the ingredients of dietary supplements, especially when these substances are consumed in high doses. Take NMN, for example. One gram a day seems to be the accepted daily dose, but there's nothing official to back this up. Even the lower dose of 250 milligrams a day is just a guess from supplement companies. Here's Rhonda Patrick talking about the equivalent human dose from successful mouse studies. So there's been all these studies over the past, I don't know, I'd say like six years probably now, five or six years, where various scientists are have been um, feeding mice, you know, this nicotinamide riboside or nicotinamide mononucleotide. And they're finding that, you know, for example, if you feed them nicotinamide mononucleotide, um, it delays aging in their liver, in their bones, in their um, eyes, their muscle. Um, their, so it's basically like their tissues are aging better. They, they have enhanced endurance. They have uh, better mitochondrial function. And these are doses like human equivalent dose to like 24 milligrams per kilogram body weight per day, which could be a lot if you weigh a lot. But, but again, this is just information and not in any way an official protocol for humans. 
when contemplating the possible harm that could arise with dietary supplements, most people just think of side effects and not the actual harm that they can do. But as with any medicine, there are other types of harm that can occur when taking dietary supplements. Let's take a look at a few of these. Side effects from vitamins and minerals can occur from either short or long-term use. Typically, side effects present when doses are too high, but not always. They can also cause new disease or upset existing conditions. And there are specific risks from certain supplements during pregnancy and when breastfeeding. A supplement's interactions with other drugs, other supplements, certain foods, and some diseases can make other drugs and medications more toxic or even less effective. The cost of dietary supplements can impact people's finances and their ability to afford treatments or other essential items. They may also think that their dietary requirements are being met by these supplements and not for cheaper processed foods over good quality whole foods. Time spent taking ineffective products may delay more effective interventions, waste valuable time and allow certain diseases to progress. Fraudulent claims and offering false hope can be demoralizing and or depressing, which for some people could make the difference between continuing to manage a health condition and simply giving up. As the number of medicines and supplements increases, so too does the chance of something going wrong. This includes risk of side effects, drug interactions, or simply making an honest mistake. Supplements that do not contain or contain less than the advertised dose of the actual compound may be substituted with an inert filler. This can obviously have cost implications and the filler may not be inert to everybody and could initiate an adverse reaction. That said, many dietary supplements are used safely for medical purposes. For example, women are regularly prescribed folic acid and iodine during pregnancy and vitamin and mineral supplements are recommended for deficiencies such as iron, calcium and vitamin D. The key to using them safely is the dose, which is determined from research demonstrating that the benefits outweigh the risks. This isn't the case when people indiscriminately self-medicate, usually with best intentions, with products purchased over the counter. Consumers rarely consider the effects of safe dose and often just take the dose recommended on the label or whatever they think is right at the time. Unfortunately, many people neglect the risk of overdosing on the same ingredient, such as vitamin B6 or vitamin A, which is more likely when taken via multiple products. For people to make informed decisions about using dietary supplements, details about the benefits and harms should be evidence-based and readily available. People need to know not only where to look for this information, but also how to evaluate it. Health professionals can assist people with this by openly discussing the risks and the benefits of dietary supplements, which is why it's vital to consult with a medical professional before you start to take any kind of dietary supplement. When assessing the potential benefits and indeed the risks of taking a dietary supplement, it's essential you look beyond the main or most well-known ingredient. Identify the product and look at all of its ingredients. Make a note of the doses of each ingredient, then calculate the potential for cumulative overdose from repeated ingredients in multiple products. This is especially important if, say, you take a multivitamin and a number of singular vitamins too. So, how do you know what to supplement with? In my humble opinion, firstly get a blood test to see if you are insufficient or deficient in anything. Then see if you can up those levels through diet and lifestyle alone. If you can, then you should try to do that first. Having done that, you should get tested again. If you are still insufficient or deficient, then look at a targeted supplement regime that hits only what you need and not the multivitamin hit and hope approach. As always, speak to a medical professional before you start to supplement. One reason that I have always been skeptical of multivitamins is the overall dose of each compound. Take a look at the supplement's facts label here and see how much of each compound either meets or gets close to the recommended daily allowance. Pause the video if you need to. The only one that states 100% is vitamin D, which is good. 
Vitamin D is actually a hormone, not a vitamin, but it is essential. However, look at what they class as an acceptable daily value. It's 400 international units. Now look at this National Institute of Health fact sheet. It states 400 units is only good for babies up to the age of one. Most of the people that watch this channel are aged between 19 and 70. So that is actually 600 international units a day. So in my humble opinion, this supplement is underdosed and is misleading. I think one of the most dishonest types of multivitamin is the specifically targeted advertising. Things such as multivitamins for the over 50s or for men over 50 or for women over 30. Why not women under 20? Because there's no market for that. There are certainly women under 20 who will be insufficient or deficient in something and would buy the product, but not enough for the company to make a profit. They only sell to those who are able to afford it. There's no way that all men over 50 or all women over 30 all have the same dietary needs. So the companies are just guessing. And unfortunately, in the main, we're all buying their lies. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. As you can tell, I'm not a big fan of multivitamins. Uh, you probably shouldn't be either. If you're taking a multivitamin and singular vitamins too, you could be wasting money or you could be uh, potentially doing yourself some harm by unwittingly overdosing. Ideally, stop taking all your supplements for a couple of weeks, let them get out of your system, then have a blood test and then see what it is that you actually need to supplement with. You could be doing your health a favour, but also your pocketbook too.